Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I make games, play games, and everything in between. And today, I'm going to take you through the 10 steps I went through to make a mobile kids game. I've left chapter links below. If you like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell as I create contents around making mobile games. This game is called ABC Match 3D. It's very simple and comes from the idea of a game called Match 3D, which came out last year. It's really popular. The game has been downloaded over 2 million times. Simple matching game where you just take objects and you put them with similar objects to match them. And I thought that was a great concept. But it's got a time limit and all these things that I don't like about it. So I thought I would start by recreating this game in my own way. For kids using the alphabet, I'm gonna take you through all the steps that I went through. The very first thing I did was Blender. Blender is a free 3D modeling software. I don't use Blender that much, but I use it just enough to forget how to use it. If you're not familiar with Blender, there's lots of tutorials out there. That's pretty much what I do. Open up a new YouTube video, start from scratch. Here we can see there are some text. Oh, this is too big. And went to file and then I exported them as a OBJ file. And I did that for every letter and the numbers. These are all the OBJ files for every letter of the alphabet. And then from here, I have the main world, the game UI, and the level complete to start off. You can see that I have imported all the text. This is really easy to do. You just go to the OBJ file and you move it in, and then it will bring the object over here, and there it is right there. Go ahead and delete that. I remember the first time I used Blender and text together. It was for my game Ball Meets World, and I was just writing level complete, game over, continue, and I was having issues because BuildBox only allows certain amount of vertices when importing into BuildBox. Some words I was able to import, but other words I was not able to import. I had the idea, why not export each letter individually, and then you can create whatever word you want. I utilized that a little bit in my game Ball Meets World, but that idea kept marinating. I later decided to make this game ABC Match 3D. Here we can see this is what it looks like and it looks pretty good. Step two is setting up the if collide. I got a lot going on here, an if collide. The object is created and then there is an if collide. If this letter A collides with another letter A, then cause an explosion, cause a scale animation, cause a color animation, and then remove the object. All this I set up took a lot of time. When I made my previous game, Puzzle Pop, I learned a lot in how to make the object look like a bubble popping. So this is taken from that game. It looks a little complicated because it is, but it has a really nice bubble popping effect when the letter A touches the letter A. In my game Puzzle Pop, I only had a is touch and a touch move, but here with the position animation and the use of these gravity nodes, you're able to pick up the object and set it down. Now this was done with the help of Zay Gamer, who uses Unity and BuildBox to make games and has a YouTube channel, so check him out. He was kind enough to help me figure this out. And I say this because I don't code. I am not a coder. We can actually see this in action. Reload, because there's a Mac dual screen bug and can lift this up lift it up and move it over to the A and boom. And then I also added the confetti for the explosion. And yeah, we can see we got the core basics of the game already happening. Confetti is super easy. This is the confetti. Let's take a look at it. And all this is a rotate node, a move node. We can see the numbers up here so that it's randomly spinning in XYZ direction, moving in XYZ direction, and then this is to getting smaller within a certain time frame, and then the random color. Very easy to do. This is the debris. This calls the debris. 
imagery over here. Some simple outlines, cubes that are invisible walls so that the object doesn't leave the play area. One important thing for the collision shape, I use the cube collision shape. Here you can see it. I generally always have the shape visible. This is really important because a cube collision shape doesn't slow down the frame rate. If I selected mesh, went over here and added the letter A alphabet, the collision shape would be spot on for the object. But now that it's a mesh, the frames rate would be ridiculously low. Along with getting the basic mechanics set up is also setting up the colors for the letters. Special thanks to Zay Gamer. He helped set up this color manager tool and this is just an object that has the color management for all of the letters. A, B, C, A through Z, 0 through 9. And with this object on the scene, when you load the screen, you can see that all the letters are matchy matchy. And then in addition to all this, go into the game UI. I set up an event observer with a session point of 52. There are 26 letters in the alphabet and each letter is assigned a point right here. All that means is when all these letters are removed, here we can do this, get the A's. You see there's two points here, four points. level complete. Now that I got the basic mechanics of the game working, the third step is setting up the menu page. Originally, I'm not a fan of menu. I just like to get into the action and have the game ready to go, but found myself hitting a wall. I was trying to right match 3D, then have that be part of the game, and then you met. It just was becoming more complicated. When something gets too complicated, I tried to go to what is the most simplest step, and that in this case was making a menu page. I wanted the menu page to be playable so that you could pick up the letters and get an idea of the game. If you've seen my Puzzle Pop video, I go through step by step on how I made that game. And it's got a similar menu screen. The idea here was help the player understand how to play the game before playing the game. We have these arrows and an X pointing to the X. You're supposed to click on the X and then move it over and then see the confetti and get an idea of how the game is played. And then you select the play button and it takes you to the world. We can see that the letters are all random and looks like I've even implemented random spawning here. The cool thing with this menu page is I've added a secret level. So if you double click the three, it will take you to just the matching of the numbers. I think it's just a nice little Easter egg for a kid's game. On the fourth step, adding a playful background. Originally, I wanted to have play mats like this. I tried creating this in Photoshop and Illustrator, but after spending an hour, I decided to find an easier way. And that's one of the biggest thing is if you're having trouble doing something, ask yourself, how can you do this in a simpler way. I was having difficulty and why don't I take a look at the asset library, saw the hexagon over here and I realized while I can't have that pattern that was like the kids play area, I could use a hexagon and then just add a texture to it. This is the texture. It's not much, it's just a bunch of little dots and lines. These little dots help give the play area its effect. And then here we can just see, I just have a random node with multiple different colors. So whenever the page loads, got that cool effect. Originally we had all the letters set up like this, which is a great beginning, but it doesn't make for a good game. If you load the game, all the letters are at the same place every time, well then that will become redundant. I even tried to mix it up manually because we are using a no code software, but I still had the same problem. Like I would have to do this a bunch of times. So what I did is I just came up with a way to spawn all the letters. So here we go. This is a spawn cube. It's called spawn ABC. 
Let's take a quick look into it. As you can see, there's a lot going on here. Now, this is the start and I have it connect to the random node and then the alphabet gets created. One group of ABC on top and one group of ABC on the bottom. And then the second selection is one group of ABC on the left and one group of ABC on the right. This is actually pretty simple. It just looks complicated. This will spawn the letter A and this letter A will be spawned somewhere between plus or minus four and then Z of four so that's in the upper area plus or minus three and I just kept those dimensions through the entire alphabet and then you can see this is the opposite where it's at negative four and then at the end it'll spawn that color management node which assigns all the letters the same colors and then it will move the spawn node itself and this is great because what that will give you is the look and feel of different letters every single time originally i just had the letter spawning anywhere on the play field Field, but that causes issues when the same letter spawns near its own letter. For example, if an A spawns to the top left, goes through this cycle, and then this A also spawns in that top left area, those will cancel it out, which takes away from the player doing it, and that's what I didn't want. Seems like it's a lot, but it's actually a lot of just copy and paste, which is pretty easy within BuildBox. The fifth step here I did was creating the app icon. When I create an app icon, I am on the BuildBox Pro version. I can have multiple worlds. If you're not on the Pro version, just save as and create a separate file specifically for this. You don't need multiple worlds. You can find loopholes to do it. That's the whole thing about game development is trying to find shortcuts. This world is just a camera view of the letters ABC Match 3D. We load this game, this is what it looks like. And all I did was I took multiple pictures of this and then I used them as my screenshot. So here we can see that these little dots are a little bit too big. So you can just go to the hex over here, go to the 3D model and you, we can turn that scale down. So that's 0.1. So it looks something like this, which is a little bit better than what we had before. And here we can see these are just some of the screenshots that I took. And the great thing about this is we are very zoomed into the letters. I actually spent a lot of time here messing with the letters in condensing, spectacular intensity, and hardness, along with bounce, friction, and things of that nature to just get them to have the right feel. When you're in it, you can just you know hit reload all the time. Just messing around with these variables to get the right look and feel. Step six was working on the transitions. I got this idea from Astro Hound. Dev Seb, he's got a huge following on TikTok. I'm a big fan of interface transitions. They're an easy way to create a little buffer between scenes. While I don't walk, I saw this pattern in front of a store. I wanted to try something similar for my skateboarding game. So I created two assets and brought them into the engine. I scaled the assets using the timeline and duplicated them to create a pattern. Now we have this neat little transition between screens. Oh yeah, and I added cops. The cops are on to me, get us out of here. In the UI, you have your open and your close. I've messed with this before. It requires diligence. If you make a mistake in the open, it could affect the close. Basically, on open, all the hex is here and then it just goes to zero. And then on close, well, I guess this one doesn't have it, but here we can take a look at what it looks like and it looks like this. Reload. It always loads weird, but the first run through doesn't show the transition gradually like that. See, that's what we want. And that looks great. So that was creating transition scene. And then we just do that to all of the UIs and it closes. Now, step number seven, I added a scoring system. Here we have the timer. Let's go into this notes. Every one second, it adds one coin. So if we start the game, here it is. This is the timer and, oh, so this is a receive node called boom that I've set up so that when the game is over, it removes this node and the timer is stopped. 
So here, let's check it out. Also added popping sounds to the game. Subscribe to something called Artless.io. It costs about 100, but I use it for my YouTube videos and I also use it for my games. If you're looking for free sound effects, free sound.org is a good place to go for free sound effects. And if you're looking for music, yeah, so just Google YouTube audio library. Like this is buy. <laughs> Yeah, buy, buy this game, that's free. Here we see we got 103 seconds and this is supposed to take you to the game services. It doesn't seem to be working. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because the game isn't live. I actually think that's the reason. It's because the app is not live. Hopefully that'll change. Step number nine, setting up AdMob. Right now, I plan to have no ads in the Google Play Store version of this game. Really worried about the Play Store slowing everything down. When you have ads, it just slows the gameplay play down and this again is a kids game so I don't want it to be super slow. For Google AdMob you just go to add app iOS. This game is not listed. You give it a name, testing, and then you create ad units, banner, interstitial, reward, and you take these IDs and you add it to the SDK over here. It's important to set everything up to succeed if your game does do well and make money. Last step is to polish, polish, polish. Everything I do when I make a game, I just try to get a basic fundamental creation of my idea to where I can play it and make it work well. But after that's finished, it's important to make everything look good. One of the last things I did was I know Vlad and why I talked to him in the Buildbox Discord channel great place to go to talk to people put out your ideas try to get some help and engage with the community it's a great way to talk to other people and specific questions i've talked to vlad over the years he's super helpful for me and i needed something very specific because while this game was complete the movement controls of picking up the letters wasn't 100% what I wanted. I was willing to pay a little extra for that. That being said, you could just use the is touch and touch move, but here, you know, you can see that it just looks a little nicer. And the mouse cursor, this style reflects more accurately in how the match 3D game is set up. That's really what I wanted for this game because I have big plans. I want to make other games using this mechanic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I'm, I'm, I better not say anything. That that's random. That's wow. That's kind of interesting. Okay, look at how the movement of the letters is now more precise. This was 100% because of Vlad's help. We worked through troubleshooting to get exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, I hope to work with Vlad again in the future. And here, love that look. Love the bounce. It's really nice to be able to make a game on your own schedule whenever you want to. This is ABC Match 3D using practically no code. It'll be out soon. Check the link below. If you like this kind of content, check out my other videos where I make different kinds of games. Until next time, stay safe out there. And I gotta go. Peace.